Have you ever wanted a super smart lab partner that never sleeps, that knows all of the literature that you haven't read, and also can just brainstorm stuff amazingly on the fly? Well, Google has got your back. They are working on this, an AI co-scientist. It was uh, talked about in February this year, and it introduces a co-scientist, which is a multi-agent system, which can help with scientific collaborations, generate hypotheses, come up with new ideas, and uh, it's pretty bloody amazing. Let's check it out. So I want to talk about Google's co-scientist. Google's co-scientist is awesome. Um, they talked about it and this is ultimately what you need to know about it, which is they have developed and introduced a co-scientist that goes beyond literature sum summarization and deep research tools. Now this is the thing, is that all of the tools up till today have just been individual tools that you can use. They go away, maybe they do a bit of research, come back, spill out stuff. This is a multi-agent approach to research, which acts like researchers sort of debating together. We'll get to that though. Um, and this is important is that it uncovers new knowledge, novel hypotheses generation, and experimental planning. Oh, you can't see that. I've ruined, I've ruined my presentation already. But ultimately, this goes far beyond just like, here's some information. This is about an AI thinking about all, and I know you don't like it when I say thinking, some of you. Anyway, you know what I mean. Going away, looking at the research, and is like, okay, these are the things that I think will work for you. So how does it work? Well, they released this big old paper towards an AI co-scientist. Um, a lot of it is kind of in this abstract, but we'll go through that now. Ultimately, this is what you need to know. This is the first thing. Specifically, the system uses a self-play strategy. <laughs> Whenever I think of like self-play or like the word play, I always think of like the fetish scene. I have no idea why. Anyway, that's where my mind goes. Um, including scientific debate and tournament based evolution process. So ultimately, it's debating with itself, it's self-playing, and then it's ranking all of its ideas and being like, you know what, this is the best, this is the worst, and why did I even think of this? Unlike a collaborator, you can be like, nah, this idea is rubbish without hurting its feelings. Love that. Okay, and this is the thing I really like about it, is that it iteratively refines hypotheses and research proposals, creating a self-improvement loop. And this is what it looks like here. So as the time increases, the research quality increases increases linearly like this. So it's always refining, it's going back, it's saying like, okay, this is good, this is bad, and it just keeps sort of like working on those ideas. But this is how you work with it. A scientist puts in a hypothesis, what they wanna do, and then you've got all of these AI agents. You've got generation agent, review agent, ranking agent, all of this, and ultimately this is what it spills out on the other end and in the research ideas tournament. I love that, I love the idea of like all these uh, medieval evil ideas like jousting. Anyway, for the king. Um, and uh, yeah, it bubbles up the best ones to the top and then it says, you know what? You should probably be working on this and this. Even for really seasoned academics, that idea generation and actually deciding what to work and i.e. like the low hanging fruits that has got evidence that it's gonna work is very, very challenging. If it can do that for you, well, it's gonna be amazing, isn't it? And this is what it looks like in like an amazingly complicated way. Um, so you've got your scientists and ultimately the scientists puts in their research goals. The research goals, they can add ideas, they can review ideas, and they can discuss the research with the agent. And then this is where the like black box happens for the scientists. This is where the AI co-scientist just goes through all of these processes. It's bouncing, bouncing, going back up here, thinking, thinking, oh my god, what a mess, it's doing all of these things. Um, it also sort of like uses search and additional tools outside of these main agents because it's got access to it, it's got a memory, but ultimately, after all of that kerfuffle, it spits out this, research proposals and overviews. So top ranked research hypotheses and proposals are summarized into a research overview and shared with the scientists. And then it can discuss that with the scientists. So this is about putting you in control. This isn't about sort of like replacing you or replacing researchers. This is about accelerating the process. And there is so much literature out there that it can get so confusing about what you should actually work on. This makes it 
so much faster. And don't just take my word for it, there's some actual case studies. We'll talk about those. So if you're worried that you're gonna be replaced by AI as a researcher, don't worry because Google said, the system is intended to augment and not supplant human scientific reasoning. So it empowers researchers apparently, if you believe Google. Now, I have got no reason not to believe Google, but so didn't they just take away the fact that they won't be evil off their like uh, mission statement? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so uh, they're talking about maintaining intellectual control over the generated insights. So it's a genuine human AI collaboration. Does that put your mind at ease? Uh, I, yeah, why not? Sure. Now this has already been tested. This is the abstract of the paper they put out and uh, ultimately there's three case studies that they did and it's amazing what it actually did. I I'm like, I'm slightly a little bit scared about how fast research will move on after this. Um, surely it's moving fast enough, but uh, no, this is about healthcare. Healthcare can never move fast enough. Not my research field, my research field can take its time. But healthcare, we want health results right now, and it's done some amazing stuff. Check this out. So the first case study is this, where it looked at drug repurposing. So it looked at all of the drugs out there, and it was looking at for acute myeloid leukemia. So that's what it was looking for, leukemia. It was looking for drugs that could be repurposed. Um, and importantly, the tumor inhibition uh, was found at clinically applicable concentrations. So it looked at all of the research, said, yeah, try these tools. And so um, you could actually get drugs that are currently out there in the world, in the literature, known drugs, and use them at doses which aren't gonna harm people and are clinically effective, and then use it to treat this form of leukemia. Amazing, but ultimately it's this, which is pretty incredible. Like AI found an FDA approved drug that could be repurposed for this cancer treatment. So that's like having a little AI dude or a little researcher that sat there and he's like, oh, I found this on the shelf. Uh, does that work? And you're like, Oh yeah, it does work actually. Incredible. So that is something that could have taken researchers years and years to find that synergy of a drug that already exists, but now it's found it for them. Amazing. The second thing that it did is it identified epigenic targets for liver fibrosis treatment leading to new thera therapeutic approaches. Ultimately, it was looking at sort of like scarring and uh, disease in livers and talking about new ways to repair and also sort of like treat those things. And importantly, it proposed new ways to to regenerate liver cells in human organoid models, which is just incredible. So not only now in the first case is it looking at like what's already out there and doing its own research, it's also proposing new methods of treating uh, this sort of like liver fibrosis. So ultimately, not only now have you got it going away and saying, hmm, yeah, I should, you should be able to do this, but it's also saying, hey, I think based on all of this past stuff, this should also be a really sort of like key area for you to focus on. So that is a pretty cool thing. And the last one really sort of like blew my mind because here the AI co-scientists independently and accurately proposed a groundbreaking hypothesis on bacterial gene transfer. This is something that apparently had not been solved for so long and it really sort of like accelerated the research to the point where this decades old issue was solved. And importantly, this was funny, it predicted a key microbiological mechanism before human researchers published it. So it was working a alongside like this process was actually being studied and researched by researchers and this AI independently kind of thought about it and said, yeah, maybe we should try this. And it published before the researchers. Now, here's the thing is, that scares me a little bit because as a researcher, I'm always sort of like thinking about how can I be the most novel, the newest, the, the front edge of this research field. And now if I've got to compete with AI, who's got this sort of like amazing brain, doesn't sleep and uh, doesn't have all the issues at home, it's just going to be like, ba 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 and then sort of like leap me, leap sheep, leap jump, frog jump. Lob, leapfrog, leapfrog me. And it's gonna leapfrog me. And it's just gonna be sort of like that constant anxiety now in the back of my mind, which is not only just like, oh, other researchers gonna beat me. It's gonna be like, shit, Google co-scientist is helping now. Oh no, I'm gonna be leapfrogged. And now I'm gonna be second. Ugh, no one remembers second.
And so all of these discoveries should have sort of like revealed to you that we've accelerated the clock speed of bio biomedical discoveries, which is just incredible. Moving at a faster rate to find discoveries which health have like genuine health impacts is so very, very important. And this is the main thing here is like, at the moment, we have so much information at our fingertips, it is overwhelming. We have this sort of like, sort of like pull and push as a researcher where we need to go deep into a subject. But now we're at a stage where not only we got to go deep, we got to look broad at the outside sort of like um, fringe uh, fields that also sort of overlap with our field and say, well, can I take from this? Can I take from this? And that is overwhelming. It's hard to be deep in a subject and broad across a large field or multiple fields to find true sort of like um, new uh, discoveries and new theses and hypotheses and that's where AI really comes into its own because it knows all of that stuff it's got access to all of that stuff and it can uh, work across disciplines faster than humans can and also I think one thing about this is that not only can it sort of like work faster but it doesn't have that ego that is like no my research feels the best like when you sit in a uh, an, an office and speak to a researcher they're always sort of like protective over their little thing like this is what I do yeah we definitely need to use this for everything like when someone's got a hammer everything is a nail and uh, they just were boo, 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 boo. they just want to hit it so this is now I think really important is this AI this AI, yeah, this AI jumps above that ego aspect and says, you know what, it's not just about my research field and what I've worked on for all these years. There's other solutions and other things that I can do. And not only does it work faster, but it can also connect knowledge in a way that some humans just don't want to because they're so protective over their particular research field. So is this the future of research? I think it is. Like, if this could be pushed out to a large population of researchers, we will see unprecedented, sort of like, really impactful results. And this is what is really exciting. Surely, as scientists and researchers, that's what we want. Let me know in the comments what you think, because this is a taste of what is to come, and it's bloody exciting. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about Notebook LM and the ways it can actually make research fun. Go check it out.